Hi guys and welcome to the Biohacking Congress in Boston. My name is Ella Devar and it's my pleasure to invite you to the next Biohacking Congress happening in Miami, October 2022. Check out biohackingcongress.com for the ticket price and availability. And today I'm going to interview Tom Bain from Microbiome Labs who's going to tell us about his company and share his views on the importance of digestion and microbiome. Tom, you can take it from here. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. Um, I'm going to be talking today at the, at the uh, biohacking conference on uh, the gut brain. And so, you know, uh, coming out of COVID now, as a society, we're really uh, struggling with a lot of mental health issues. And so, um, what we've been doing research with is understanding the connection between the digest digestive tract and the microbiome and brain health, uh, symptoms of anxiety and depression uh, being related to imbalances in your gut microbiome. So I'll be presenting the science around that and some products that can help peop people uh, feel healthier. Love it. So I'm presenting tomorrow on optimal digestion and how mindfulness can help the offset the damage that stress does. But microbiome and specifically your brain is a second, um, your gut is a second brain is like part of my lecture. Right. And I want to get, get your intake. You know, as a registered dietitian who specializes in prevention, I see the difference between my clients, like even husband and wife on the foods that they're eating, which are, happen to be the same thing, how their body reacts differently because of their microbiome. And you, someone who's dedicated so much time, energy, and money into studying and creating business around it. Tell us more, what inspired you and how do you do what you do? Well, it's, uh, the inspiration came out of frustration. Uh, the inspiration was that they're, they're, the products that were in the marketplace you know, 10 years ago when we started the company, um, the, the products that were in the marketplace at that time um, were ineffective. Uh, largely ineffective and, and we were dealing more with marketing claims than we were dealing with science. Mm -hmm. So an example would be everybody always says well, the best probiotics are in the refrigerator. Um, where's the research study that shows that? There's, there's never been a clinical trial that shows that probiotics that are kept in the refrigerator are better than probiotics that are on the shelf. And the other idea is that more is better. Well, you only have 100 billion CFUs, I have 200 billion. You know, it's like, that's, that's a game, that's a marketing game. There's no, no research study that shows that 10 billion is better than 5 billion, mm -hmm. or 50 billion is better than 10. There's no research for that. So, so the, the product ideas came out of the frustration of, in the marketplace and the, the lack of consistent results seen from, you know, within the same patients or even or from patient to patient, regardless of how we looked at results with probiotics 10 years ago, we were frustrated with how the, with the lack of function. And, it, and when it all comes down to it, you know, to me, when we eat, we, it, we can choose food that is either pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory. Right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and when we're done with that meal, the response that our body has to eating can be the same thing. It can either be pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. Most people, the literature says about 50% of the population, but most people after they eat something, whether it's healthy or not, they experience leaky gut. Mm -hmm. uh, leaky gut meaning that some of the poisons, some of the bacteria, bacterial byproducts, in their microbiome have spilled into their bloodstream mm -hmm. by going past the epithelial layer and, and into the bloodstream. And so we can measure this, right? It's a difficult thing to measure in clinical practice, but in a research setting, we can, we can uh, test it because what we have to do is we have to take your blood every hour after you eat a meal mm -hmm. and see, how, see your, how. How, how it responds. Mm -hmm. LPS has a very short half-life in your body. LPS comes from gram-negative bacteria. When they die, they lyse and they release this lipopolysaccharide, this LPS, into the lumen of your intestines and it should go out in your stool, no problems. Mm -hmm. but when that LPS spills into your bloodstream, it creates a response that's very similar to septicemia, like your body thinks you have a bacterial infection in your blood. Mm -hmm. And so it responds with a cascade of cytokines and inflammatory process. 
So that's a good thing when you have a bacteria in your blood and you actually, when that actually happens. But it's not supposed to happen three times a day every day mm -hmm. when you eat, right? right. So, so this is the main stress that comes from us eating, right? So we've been able to prove that it happens mm -hmm. and then we were able to give patients a 30 day supply of probiotic and showed that the patients who took the probiotic had a 70% reduction in LPS compared to the control who didn't take the probiotic. So, and that was in the absence of any change in diet or lifestyle or anything like that. We just gave them the probiotic. Mm -hmm. So college students, they weren't doing anything good for their microbiomes. Yeah. So, so that critical thinking and the desire to, to fix a problem was what created Microbiome Labs. And so we were able to show that our five strain spore-based probiotic um, reduces, leaky, reduces the amount of LPS that circulates in the body, reduces the inflammatory response that your immune system has to the food you just ate. And so, so we've been able to prove that. We're the only probiotic that's ever done a human clinical trial on leaky gut. Mm -hmm. And we're the only probiotic that's shown the ability to fix the leaky gut. So, um, that opened up a whole new world for us because when you talk about leaky gut, and, and it's funny because people say leaky gut, well that doesn't even exist, what mm -hmm. is that? If you read metabolic endotoxemia, uh -huh. uh, that's the, the passage of bacteria and bacterial byproducts into the bloodstream and then the reciprocal cytokine response of inflammation. Mm -hmm. That's called metabolic endotoxemia. Well in functional medicine we've been calling that leaky gut because Patients don't understand what metabolic endotoxemia is. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. You, whatever condition you have, Google that condition and metabolic endotoxemia and see everything that comes up. But basically, every digestive disorder that you can think of has leaky gut at the root of it. Mm -hmm. um, every autoimmune disease has leaky gut either as part of the pathophysiology or in some cases, it's the presumption of why the autoimmune disease mm -hmm. e even exists. Um, Diabetes, the number mm -hmm. one thing that takes someone from high blood sugar to a diabetic, the number one marker that you see is elevated LPS in the bloodstream. And so cancer, the certain immunotherapies, patients with type four melanomas and, and, and cancers like that, they, some of them could take an immunotherapy, a small percentage of them could take it and have a complete reversal of their stage four cancer, but others don't. And the main difference, their microbiomes. And so, so there, there's so many opportunities to help people if you can reduce the amount of LPS that spills after they eat a meal. Yeah, and just to summarize your thought um, for people who are listening, so you described the problem, right, the leaky gut, but how does someone who has a variety of symptoms, right, how do they, um, for them to, to understand this, how do, how do they get leaky gut? Is it something you get through genetics? Is it something that you know, happens to you over time? Like how, how do you prevent leaky gut? The thing is, is that we're seeing more than half of people with no symptoms mm. having this symptom, mm -hmm. right? So the thing about it is, is that this seems to be part of the human experience, right? Mm -hmm. There's genetics that are associated with it. Obviously, we found that high saturated fat meals mm -hmm. created a more exaggerated hmm. uh, response. So which is like keto and paleo right. meals. Yes, Let's see. yeah. Wow. So we saw that like when we wanted to create leaky gut in dogs, all we did was pour coconut oil on the dog food. Hmm. So they ate it, they didn't have leaky gut. We poured coconut oil on their kibble, they got leaky gut. Oh, wow. So, so and you know, in, in the case of, uh, you know, the, the study Isn't that it a did. little like oversimplified because there's so many, you know, functional medicine practitioners that are, you know, eat fat, get thin. I'm sure you know that book. From, so the thing is, yeah. is that there's, it's not that we're saying that those, that you shouldn't eat those things. What we're saying is it, when you eat those things, it's even more important for you to protect your microbiome. Mm -hmm. That's what we're saying, Got right? It. Mm -hmm. So, so if you're something like, if you, you really have a hard time disputing the benefits, like for example, keto in, in someone who uh, may have predisposition to Alzheimer's or early onset Alzheimer's, right? I've seen patients do phenomenal with keto, you know, but at the same time, you have to protect their microbiome because otherwise you'll, you're gonna create another problem. And so, but, but the point is, is that 
if, if it's someone who's visiting a, a healthcare practitioner, you should just assume they have leaky gut. And there's really not wow. a bunch of tests that you can do or anything like that to prove it. Yeah. You'd have to be in a clinical, so you'd have to have blood drawn every hour. It's, right, it's, I was just it's, talking it's to someone. It's not something someone. you could do in a practice. Right. Like right before you, I had a functional diagnostic nutritionist, and even for her, it was like a, you know, like to describe a way to diagnose someone with leaky gut. It's it's quite challenging. Isn't it's very it? challenging, yeah. and, and, and we we've gone down the road of trying to figure out how to do it, and um, it it's the, the LPS has a very short half life in your in your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. Thank God, right? Because otherwise, you you constantly have the, once again the for those who are listening LPS is lipopolysaccharide it's okay. the Which bacterial byproduct. byproduct that mm -hmm. spills into the bloodstream and that's what triggers your immune system when those uh, junctions in the epithelial cells are not as are tight open, as right. they should be exactly okay. yeah and the mucin layer is shrunk down mm -hmm. and there's there's uh, you know you're, you've got the bacteria now touching the epithelial layer going through the tight junctions mm -hmm. into the basal lateral circulation how does testing for uh, food intolerances and sensitivities correlate to this and can potentially help so the thing is is that if you have a sensitivity say you're gluten sensitive just to have a conversation if you're gluten sensitive and you eat gluten, mm -hmm. you're going to have a worse response from your leaky gut, right? So if you're, if you're gluten free, I can't say that if you eat uh, a gluten free meal that you're not going to experience the spilling of LPS into your bloodstream. That I can't say. But if you eat wheat, I know you're gonna have it and I know it's gonna be worse than it would be with another food. Mm -hmm. So that's where it connects. I tend to find allergy testing somewhat like chasing your tail because you end up what ends up happening when you have the leaky gut you end up being allergic to whatever it is you're eating right so if you say oh i'm allergic to these five things i'll stop eating them oftentimes you know two three months later you do the test again and you're not showing as much reaction to those foods but you're showing reaction more reactions to the foods now that you're eating instead of those foods mm. and so the leaky gut is really the 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 fix for the food allergy patient, the patient yeah. with food sensitivities, yeah, yeah, yeah. is to correct that underlying leaky gut issue and then try to eat it in, in, in an anti-inflammatory way. If, if you're someone who's had you know, uh, IgG or uh, immediate onset reaction type mm -hmm. allergies, okay? It's rare, those are rare kind of allergies, but if you have those, well then you can never eat that food. Yeah, you that's know? IgE. Yeah, if you have an IgE reaction mm -hmm. to peanuts, mm -hmm. you can never eat peanuts. That's not mm -hmm. a, what we're talking about is, what we see in functional medicine a lot is, people have, a, they've developed a sensitivity yeah. to a food over that's time. That's IgG and That's IgA. more of an IgG, IgA mm -hmm. reaction. And right. you have a solution for that, isn't it? Isn't one of your products comes with so we do have a we have a, a serum bovine IgG product that we use. Yeah, and that's that a very interesting product. It's I like to call it smart, uh, like it's 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 in, intelligent charcoal, right? Because okay. if we take charcoal, what do we take? What are we taking charcoal for? We're looking to sop up poisons, toxins, and get them out of the body, right? Mm -hmm. That's what charcoal would do. Mm -hmm. The bad part about charcoal is it'll take everything. It'll take nutrients. It'll take uh, yeah. the good stuff too, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? The serum bovine IgG is actually like smart, smart charcoal. It goes down and it sops up all the poisons and toxins, but it doesn't take out any of the good stuff. So we use that with patients definitely in the early phases of working with them when there's a lot of die off. You know, when whatever infection they have in their digestive tract starts to die off, those poisons and toxins, that can be worse than the actual infection sometimes. Mm. So IgG is very important for neutralizing those poisons. And in some cases with the LPS, it'll bind to the LPS in your digestive tract before the LPS spills into the bloodstream. So it prevents it from getting into the bloodstream. Got it. Okay, so going back to where we started, you as a functional medicine practitioner and the founder of the microbiome lab. How, where, how did you make that transition from working with clients and patients one-on-one -on -one and then deciding that there's a m missing piece in this healthcare industry and you need to create this company? So I had, in my younger years, in mm -hmm. the mid-90s, I had uh, spent time uh, living in Belgium, mm -hmm. working for a company that was importing products from the U.S. and distributing them in Europe. And I worked for that company for four years. 
Um, and I did that while I was running a family practice with my wife. So we were both chiropractors, both doing functional medicine. She mm -hmm. does a lot of acupuncture, things like that. So, okay. so we had, we were doing these two things in tandem. Um, we sold that company to Metagenics actually. Metagenics here in the US bought that European company. That's their European headquarters now. And so we moved back to the States when Metagenics took over. Mm -hmm. And we were just gonna have the family practice thing. Uh, but I enjoyed the business side of it so much that I stayed active with it. I stayed active with it uh, on the research side. Um, I stayed active on the education side, training other chiropractors how to use functional medicine. Mm -hmm. So I was active in the industry. Um, in my clinical practice, I was frustrated with the lack of results. Um, I had had some experience with one spore-based probiotic. I felt like it was pretty good compared to other probiotics. And so we started working with Dr. Cutting out of the University of London, and he had a whole bank of bacteria. And we were able to work with him, and we decided on uh, five particular species of mm -hmm. spore-based probiotics. These are bacteria that have as part of their life cycle, they can dehydrate themselves and turn into a spore. And it's basically they, they kind of go into a state of suspended animation, if you will, like they're, they're dormant, if you will, in that spore state. And that's critical because the spore allows them to survive through the stomach acid. Mm -hmm. So bacteria don't just pass through your stomach and into your large intestine. That, mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. The stomach is a huge barrier to entry. It doesn't just let bacteria in. Mm -hmm. Everybody would die of intestinal infections if the stomach just let any bacteria swim mm -hmm. past. Right. So the spores are able to survive because they're in spore form. Mm -hmm. Once they hit into the small intestine, they go into their vegetative state and they act like the police of the intestines. They're in small concentration compared to the overall number of bacteria, but they seek out the bad guys and they get rid of the bad guys and they create an environment that's conducive for the good guys, the bacteria that you got from your mom, mm -hmm. to increase in their concentration. And what are the results that your patients started to see with this product? You know, it was interesting because um, in the beginning, I, I only used it in my practice, probably mm -hmm. the first maybe 500 patients were just under my personal care. Um, and it was, it was unusual because I probably had like 100 people on the product and I hadn't seen any like negative reaction. Mm -hmm. And I started to verbalize that and that's when I started seeing problems. Um, so, so it seems that about, probably about 10% of people who take the product, mm -hmm. that take the, the spore-based probiotic, will have intestinal cramping or loose stool diarrhea. Oh, wow. um, we've seen people get headaches, we've seen rashes. It's a die-off reaction, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's, a, it's a good thing, oh, wow. but it needs to happen slower so that it's more comfortable for the individual. Mm -hmm. So after I started seeing, like I was in, I'd seen 100, maybe 125 patients, I saw the first person have a negative reaction. Mm -hmm. So. What we decided then is, is to prevent that, what we do is we titrate everybody. So what we tell everybody, take one capsule of the spore every other day for a week, then take one capsule a day for a week, and then go up to the full dose of two capsules a day. Okay. When you take the two capsules, you take them at, at the same time, and all supplementation of our probiotic is with or after a meal. We want there to be protein and sugar, in the body, in the digestive tract, mm -hmm. when the spores come out of their spore state. Got it. We know that they're gonna be 20% more active mm -hmm. if there's food than if there's no food. Yeah, so what are the, some of the um, like top recommendation products that you from your company that you, yeah, so like everyone can benefit? So Megaspore is the hero product. You Mega know, spores. Megaspore Biotic your is, probiotic. is the probiotic, mm -hmm. yeah. And so when, when we first started giving it to patients, it was, you know, irritable bowel, inflammatory bowel. It was mostly digestive health related patients. Mm -hmm. And some of those patients we saw immediate results. Others, it took a little bit of time before the, the changes started taking effect and they mm -hmm. started seeing improvement in their symptoms. And so um, that's a great product. That's, that's, that's the main product in our, in our product line. Um, the, the total gut restoration program mixes the probiotic with a prebiotic and with a mucosal repair product. And so those three products make up our total gut restoration program. And that's, that's for patients who have significant digestive 
and immune dysfunctions. You know, somebody comes in and they're pre-diabetic and they've got Hashimoto's disease and, yeah. you know, this is somebody who's going to need the full program. Yeah. Somebody comes in and they're otherwise healthy, they're looking to maybe lose a little bit of weight and maybe get fit. Uh, maybe they have certain foods they eat, they get a little bit of gas and bloating, but otherwise they would say they're healthy. They probably only need the probiotic. Mm -hmm. They probably don't need the entirety of the full program. Um, but, but they need that probiotic. And, and until we figure out how to eat mm -hmm. and not spill poisons into our bloodstream, mm -hmm. we need the probiotic. We need prevention. So how do we figure out how, what to eat? What's so your the, top recommendations? For so I think, take? you know, I think it's about eating in an anti-inflammatory way, mm -hmm. right? So high concentrations of, of, of vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, I think fruit should only be eaten alone and on an empty stomach. It should okay. not be mixed in meals. It shouldn't be a meal. Um, it should be a snack and it should be, uh, it, it should be away from other food. It only takes fruit about, about 20 minutes to be digested. Mm -hmm. um, if you eat it with a meal where it takes two hours to digest the meal, you start to have problems. You start to have fermentation of the fruit and you start to create dysfunction. So, so, mm -hmm. so that's an important component. But then I, you need small amounts of protein and small amounts of fats to keep balance. Right. And so, so the thing about it is, is there is no one cure fi fits all. There is not one fix for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you, you know, what for me, it was always an individual conversation. Mm -hmm. Where are you? Let me come to where you're at mm -hmm. and let me create a plan for where you're at so that you can get where you want to be. Um, but by and large, you know, there's, um, you know, we have a long winding digestive tract like animals who only eat plants. Mm -hmm. So, and when you measure how the body responds when we eat plants, you see uh, n not a high insulin push. You don't see a huge inflammatory reaction mm -hmm. to the body when we eat plants. Yet, we need certain amino acids that we can't get in plants. You know, so, so to me, I look at moderation. I look at small amounts of animal proteins with large amounts of, of vegetables mm -hmm. and, and small amounts of fats and small amounts of fruits. That's a, a nice blended diet for most people, yeah. but then you have to make it individualized. Well, as a registered dietitian, I would sign off on that recommendation, yeah. definitely. But um, so you started saying about the top recommendations from microbiome labs, right? So for someone who's um, you know, a biohacker and part of a community, you know, those are most of the people who are very educated on the topic and do all of the right things, right? But still find themselves spinning their wheels and have continuous like or like nagging symptoms, right? Whether it's like brain fog or not being able to get through the day without energy crashes, right? And people who've tried everything, all of the you know devices and supplements, right? And uh, what's your like top recommendations for those people? You know, like either that's testing, right? You guys do testing, not just we like, we do do yeah. microbiome analysis too, mm -hmm. and that's the the you know when, when you when you're talking about somebody who has layers of problems, you know and somebody who's been to multiple practitioners mm -hmm. over the years, somebody, somebody who's suffering. Mm -hmm. When you talk about those patients, a, the most comprehensive approach would require an analysis of their microbiome mm -hmm. so that we know exactly what's going on mm -hmm. uh, a tr and a treatment program around that. Mm -hmm. At the same time, and you know, one of the things that I'll be talking about at, at the Biohacking Conference today is the different things cause our gut and our brain to become disconnected. Mm -hmm. There's multiple different factors that can do that. But when that happens, you're more prone to anxiety and depression. And so making that connection, making sure that the gut and the brain are connected is key to mental health. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the connection, I don't wanna say it's a key to mental health because that's not fair. It is the connection between the microbiome and mental health mm -hmm. is is that that need for a healthy breakdown of tryptophan to serotonin and melatonin. When tryptophan is, is being broken down in a dysfunctional way, it becomes an excitotoxin, can't sleep, and you're more prone to anxiety and depression. So for us to be having conversations now in, in, in 2022 about being able to help people with anxiety and depression, which coming out of COVID, we have a, a, an epidemic of this now. 
So to be able to come full circle and, and actually make people recognize that it's actually your digestive tract that's driving this. Mm -hmm. And if we can start making smart choices about what you're putting in your mouth and start correcting the imbalance that you have in your microbiome, we can actually help you with the, those mental health issues. Yeah. And so, so it's exciting because it, from my perspective, it puts the individual back in control. And I always like it when the individual has control. When I was seeing patients, I always made sure that they were aware of the fact that, look, I am your advisor right. here. I'm not doing the healing. Right. You're doing the healing, right? right? You're just so, interpreting uh, this connection between themselves and their body, right? right? And exactly. Like, and so, yeah. but, I, but to get them in the position where I can say to them, okay, if you can do this, you're going to see improvement. It's on you now, mm -hmm. right? That's, for me, the, to, to be able, for, for a patient to be able to, to take the anxiety and depression in their, in their own control yeah. and do something about it, that's exciting. So tell us about more that. about the results that you see for people who, you know, come in, I'm sure, with like other diagnoses, right, other problems, but then you see that anxiety and depression and uh, symptoms like that related to mental health improve. You know, I would love to say that we're, we're a really smart company, you know, and that we knew all these things. A lot of things that, that have happened, happened in My front accent. of our eyes <laughs> and we didn't know that we needed to be looking at it. Mm -hmm. um, one of the early things, one of the first patients I put on the product uh, was a patient who had IBS mm -hmm. and came in for IBS. Mm -hmm. But she had this other thing, don't worry about it, it's just my right. rheumatoid arthritis, don't worry about that, I take medication for that, don't worry about it. Got but it. help me with the IBS. And so we started, treated the IBS with the spores, she started getting better, she felt great. And then the next time she gets her blood work done at the rheumatologist, her numbers look better. Is it possible this is helping with my rheumatoid arthritis? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't know. Let me call some friends. So I call a couple of docs I know who treat lots of different types of patients. Hey, you seeing this with rheumatoid arthritis patients? Someone right away, I am, I just saw that. Or someone else will go, well, let me look into it. I don't know, maybe. And sure enough, we collect a small group of data and we're like, hey, this is helping people with rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. This is helping reduce the inflammation associated with rheumatoid arthritis. So things like that happened a lot. Um, you know, the, the uh, connection to, between the gut and the brain. We didn't know that there were certain types of bacteria that had these hair-like projections on them and these proteoglycans that are able to make sure that tryptophan is broken down in a healthy way towards melatonin mm -hmm. and not towards the inflammatory side of, mm -hmm. of the equation. And, and so, and then, and then we're seeing people getting better with anxiety and depression. Like yeah. we didn't have the intelligence of saying, maybe this helps with anxiety and yeah. depression. It was a, whoops, yeah. this helps with anxiety and depression. Let's study it now. Yeah. And uh, you know, and there's been a, a lot of research now on this 1714 Bifidobacterium longum strain, where um, you know we have a good sense now that we can treat the symptoms of anxiety and depression while we're correcting the underlying imbalance in the microbiome. So we can give them symptom improvement while we're correcting the long-term problem. Well, same thing for me as a dietitian. People come in with IBS symptoms, right? But you know, other, like, as an integrated dietitian, I ask the entire, like, lifestyle questionnaire, right, mm -hmm. before I work with them, and I see that there are, there are other issues that they don't want to talk to dietitian about, like right. anxiety, right, or AD, ADD, but um, it's actually part of the, you know, I've studied this, and I see that there's a huge uh, correlation between patients with IBS and uh, inflammatory bowel disease and mental health because of serotonin. Yeah. And serotonin is usually low with those uh, patient population groups, yeah. which is a happy hormone, right? Yeah. Which affects our overall well-being, our mood, and our mental health. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a strong correlation that most people just There don't. was a study that showed that 50% of patients diagnosed with IBS have anxiety and or depression. Yes. 50%. That's crazy. And we, what's the number one reason people go to a doctor? Digestive complaints. Yeah. That's the number one reason people see, seek out help. Mm -hmm. um, and, and IBS is kind of this garbage can diagnosis of, well, you got a bunch of symptoms associated with your gut and I don't really know what to do about it, so I'm gonna call you IBS. Yeah. 
And it's part of the vicious cycle because um, most people who go to the doctors, right, the other underlying um, cause is stress. Mm -hmm. But these days, most of us living in this like high-performing society, we're all busy, and stress becomes like, oh, it's normal. Like mm -hmm. it's a normal part of life. But what it it actually creates this vicious cycle because right. you're so stressed out, you don't have time to cook for yourself. You end up eating on the go, right? And because you're doing this, you're feeling anxiety, and you're in this loop from one side thinking like, it's okay, I gotta somehow figure this out, right? And that's when, you know, all the symptoms start to surface. And that's actually part of my talk tomorrow, how to mm -hmm. optimize your digestion, and right. I will be leading a meditation. Excellent, see, <laughs> yes, yeah. I'll be, uh, and breath work, giving right. uh, my uh, clients and the listeners this simple tool is like, this is your job, right. to activate your parasympathetic nervous system, mm -hmm. right? Take this deep uh, breath in and slow breath out, do the switch, so your body is actually able to prioritize digestion, yeah. and enzy enzymatic secretions, right, bile secretions, and to be able to absorb the nutrients, right? So, but coming back to microbiome labs, right? Mm -hmm. You mentioned the number one product that you recommend mm -hmm. for almost everyone. Is there anything else? So the product that helps c connect the gut and brain is, is critical for, for patients that have the, the mental issues, the, mm -hmm. the anxiety and depression symptoms. And so that's another hero product. It's, uh, it's something unique to microbiome labs and, uh, and it it's called? very effective. That's, th there's two products, it's called ZenBiome. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ZenBiome Cope is meant to be taken during the day and the ZenBiome Sleep is meant to be taken at night. Oh wow. And so it's meant to help your body you know, break down the tryptophan into the, the healthier serotonin, melatonin side of the equation. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, uh, it's, very, it's, it's proven to be very effective for patients with uh, showing signs of anxiety Zen and biome it's Zen called? Zen biome it's called. And it's two types of probiotics designed to be taken in the morning and at night. Right. Yeah. Fascinating, I haven't so, seen anything like that. Yeah, and then, so, so we have that. So, but really the whole idea of microbiome labs is we're trying to create products that are unique and 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 products that fill a need. Uh, we're not just trying to make a product because other people are making a product. We take a different approach to how we create products, how we um, innovate and, and create a new idea. It's usually based on conversations with practitioners. It's usually based on a conversation where somebody goes, I see a lot of people with this and I can't find anything that helps. And so then we start working with it and we start mm. thinking about it as a clinician, but as a clinician with a background in product development. And well, so, because you have access to consumers right. and providers, right? You're the one who's in charge of making, having a lab, making the product, and people who are benefiting from the product, right. and you're able to custom blend, right, or create a, uh, create a product. That's amazing. So tell us more about the diagnostic tools that you're using. So we did not plan to get into diagnostic testing to be perfectly honest with you it wasn't our intention at all but what was happening is smart doctors were coming to us and saying hey you know i've got this test the stool test mm -hmm. can you tell me why it says this yeah. and so then you have to say well the technology that they're using for this test isn't strong enough to give you this information so mm. this really isn't a valid test to give you the information it's supposedly giving you and then the doctors are like, what? Well, what do we do, you know? Right. And so if we were just a lab company, we would have to charge $2,000 for this test, right? But we're not a lab company. We, we, we want the doctors to have the information. Mm -hmm. The information is the value here. When the doctors have this information, they can make better decisions. Mm -hmm. When they can make better decisions, they can treat their patients better. Mm -hmm. So we pretty much give the testing away at mm -hmm. our expense so that it's affordable for patients. Mm -hmm. And we're able to use the gold standard for evaluation of your microbiome. Mm -hmm. And that's full shotgun metagenomic sequencing. Not the 16 Is that a stool test? It's a stool test, yes. I've actually, I looked at your uh, reports mm -hmm. at a last conference in Las Vegas. It's pretty valid because I worked with, you know, um, other companies and I was like, wow, I should, you know, consider this lab depending on, you know, where my clients are and what their needs are. For sure. Are. I mean, if, 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 if assessing the health of the microbiome is your goal, mm -hmm. then the biome effects test is your top choice. Okay. The other tests that are out there will give you portions of what we can give you. Mm -hmm. And so the, the uh, interesting piece about the uh, BioMFX test is 
we're working towards 31 different functional imbalances, something that you as a practitioner can do something about, mm -hmm. be it dietarily, lifestyle, supplement wise. Mm -hmm. And so, and we you did that by taking the information on the test and then putting it side by side with the research. The research mm -hmm. that shows certain imbalances of bacteria are associated with metabolic imbalances like diabetes. So when we see that, we make a line, we make, make a note there. Hey, this type of imbalance, we typically will see metabolic disorders. You know, so watch out for that mm -hmm. and make these dietary changes, add these supplements to, to your regime to prevent this. Yeah. So, so it's a, an all-encompassing test um, to evaluate the microbiome. But the thing is, is that our goal is to be all things biome. We, we as humans, we are a holobiome. Mm -hmm. We are a bunch of different biomes. We've got our microbiome of our gut, we've got an oral microbiome in our mouth, we even have a, a microbiome in our eye. There's a particular balance of bacteria in a healthy so we eye. We have a microbiome of our skin. We have skin. a microbiome of our skin, yeah. microbiome of the vaginal tract. Mm -hmm. So, so we just launched just last week. We launched the vaginal biome effects test. I heard. Yeah. So now we can analyze uh, the vaginal microbiome, and the vaginal microbiome is is a simpler place to analyze. Mm -hmm. There's less bacteria than there are in the gut, um, and and there's just a few basic types of imbalances that that show up. Uh, but nonetheless, having the analysis and having the ability to see the imbalance and effectively treat it, um, there's been a big interest with that. We should have an oral microbiome test by some, sometime next year. Um, we're in conjunction right now working on a skin microbiome test. So the goal is to be able to analyze mm -hmm. all the microbiomes and offer treatments. For the different microbiomes. So tell our listeners, where do they find more information on your test as well as the product? So best place to go is our website, um, microbiomelabs.com is, is our website. You'll get some information there. Biome Effects has its own website, so it's biomeffects.com. Um, and that, that you can read some information on that. Um, the, the best thing to do is, if you're a practitioner, is get involved with our education. Mm -hmm. at, the, at the end of the day, we really are an education company. We, we are training healthcare practitioners to better understand the microbiome. So if what, are, uh, what kind of healthcare practitioners? Do you have a lot of nutritionists? A lot of nutritionists, a lot of dietitians. I'm a chiropractor, you know, we have a lot of chiropractors, m medical doctors. Mm -hmm. um, the medical doctors that we have though are mostly functional medicine medical doctors, right? And your education is cost-free? Like what's the, what's uh, Many the times it is, you know, like, yeah. like, like today, you know, I'm here mm -hmm. to speak to everybody in Boston uh, about what we do. Um, you know, it's a, a free information for them. You know, yeah. they come in here and they, and they get to listen to me talk and listen to, you know, hear what our company's doing for people to help them be he live healthier lives. So other times there's, uh, you know, we've got a, a, a mini, microbiome se mini microbiome keynote series where we try to do quarterly where people can register for them. And, and uh, we usually have four or five key opinion leaders that are speaking about specific uh, topics that we find are relevant mm -hmm. in today's medical place. Okay. And so they will we'll put together a, 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 a mini day, one day conference where four or five doctors will talk and give the information out. So, so we try to do the best we can to get the information out. Mm -hmm. that's, we feel like that's the key thing. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, it's empowering not only for the patients but also for providers. Right. And we really are a provider first co pay, uh, company. Um, it's, you know, if you, if you pull a product off the shelf and it gives you diarrhea, you're never going to take that product again, right? Mm -hmm. We've been able to teach people that it's actually good when you get diarrhea. If you start oh, wow. taking Megaspore and you get diarrhea, you took too much back down the dose a little bit. Uh -huh. um, you can do this in a comfortable way, but that diarrhea is because something bad in there is dying off and your body's trying to get rid of it. And mm -hmm. so, so you can do that when you have the buffer of, of a physician to educate mm -hmm. the patient. When you're straight to retail, it's, more, it's difficult to do that. So, yeah, I see that. Yeah. That makes sense. All right, guys, so the next Biohacking Congress in Miami happening in October. I hope you'll be able to join us for more information and live stream. And I'll see you there. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure having you. Thank Very you for educational. Me. I learned a lot. I always, you know, I'm so fascinated to learn from the providers, people who are passionate about what they do, because it's a never ending, um, you know, the more you know, the more you realize how much you don't know. Yeah, exactly. So thank you for today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Mm -hmm.